All right, Pickle. Let's talk a little bit about the national championship game, the college football national championship game going on uh, Monday. on Monday, uh, the 2023 uh, college football playoff national championship game. And for the first time since 2010, a Texas team will be participating. That's right. And the first go. time in the playoff era, uh, it will be the TCU Horned Frogs making their first ever trip to the national championship game, taking on the defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. And we mentioned this yesterday with Greg Powers, and we'll continue to mention it. It is pretty clear that TCU's... Oh, come on. It's pretty clear Boo. that TCU's an underdog in this game. Yes. At least according to Vegas and according to the people. Now, the population. it opened at 13 and a half. Mm -hmm. It has steamed down to 12 and a half. Mattress Mac put down like three and a half on TCU when it was 13. Let me tell you this. I think because generally speaking with big events like this, with big events like the um, national championship game, like the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. like the NBA Finals, things like that, big singular events, the sharp money comes in late. And what I mean by that are like the professional betters and mm -hmm. the big pe the big time people who are like do this for a living that money comes in late and i got to be honest i think it's going to favor georgia and i think that there's i think that what i think that if i think there are sharps in vegas who are looking at this steam down to 12 and a half mm -hmm. 12 maybe and they're going oh boy i'm about to get a discount mm -hmm. because i think that the general the general consensus is that 13 and a half to 14 was about right. Yep. That George is a pretty clear favorite in this game. Mm -hmm. But TCU's been an underdog multiple times this year. They were an underdog against Texas, I believe. They were underdogs. Uh, I, they, I don't know what the... I would need to go back and check the line on Oklahoma. I wonder if they were underdogs in that game, which obviously didn't age well because Oklahoma was garbage. I think they were an underdog against Oklahoma State. Might have been. Might have been an uh, underdog against Kansas State, too. Yeah. Um, but they've been underdogs. They were obvious underdogs last week in the college football national semifinal against Michigan. They've been underdogs before. But perhaps you don't know a ton about the George Bulldogs because, you know, uh, the SEC team in Texas didn't play them. Texas A&M didn't play Georgia this year. Um, so we haven't talked a ton about Georgia this year. Uh, and so if you are looking at the the game on, on Monday and you need to know who TCU needs to be worried about, that's why we're here. Now, let me be very clear. Obviously, obviously, they should pay attention to the quarterback, mm -hmm. to Stetson Bennett, who is Seems normal. very solid, very solid. Uh, although he threw a pretty horrific interception in their title game or in their, in their semifinal win over Ohio State, but what led a fantastic drive to essentially to win the game there in the final minutes. Um, and he is a, he's very good, very, very good. I didn't want to put him on this list because, duh, like, of course you should pay attention to Stetson Bennett and make sure he doesn't beat you. But all of that is to say, I have got three players – that TCU absolutely has to deal with if they're going to win the national championship. Okay? Three players. We will start with tight end Brock Bowers. Are you familiar with Brock Bowers? Yes. You are? I are mean, you? I watch their game. Okay, so yeah. Like, I wouldn't say that I could tell you his stat line, but I can say I know he makes an impact. <laughs> Brock Bowers is one of two absolute monsters at mm -hmm. tight end. That they have. Yes. They've got two. And Brock they Bowers, use them a lot. Darnell Both Washington's the other. Now, Darnell Washington went out of the semifinal game with an injury. We mm. do not know his status. Was it ankle? Looked like it. Now, who we don't know his status uh, for, for this national championship game, but whether or not he's out there, Brock Bowers is really, really important to what they do. Brock Bowers is fundamentally a slot receiver mm -hmm. who's 6'4", 230. Yep. Like, think like this guy is a monster out there, mm -hmm. and he is for a team that they do they do throw the ball fairly well. Mm -hmm. This is this is their go to guy in big situations when yeah. they need a when they need a big catch they go to him. 
Well, and we talked about it yesterday, too, that the TCU defensive front is Mm -hmm. fine. Their strength of the defense is in their secondary, which obviously helps with this. But Bowers is so big that when he does get past the line of scrimmage and make the catch, it gets dangerous. He is also, the other thing is, and especially the other thing with Darnell Washington, he is like a sixth offensive lineman for them. He is an outstanding Mm -hmm. blocker. He's an outstanding pass blocker or an outstanding blocker. Both of them are outstanding blockers. Both of them are stars. But Brock Bowers is a freak show. Brock Bowers is probably their most remarkable player mm-hmm. is what I mean. And he is he is stunning to watch. And, and so TCU has got to find an answer for him. And they move him around so much to try to get him mismatches on linebackers, on on nickelbacks, on on guys that they feel like they can exploit. And so TCU has got to have an answer for Brock Bowers if they're going to win this game. For the next one, I want to go over to the defensive side. And I want to talk about defensive lineman Jalen Carter. He's a big boy. The Georgia front is, in my opinion... The Great Wall of China. <laughs> it's, the, it's their strength. Yeah. Their secondary, I think, can be had. And I think you saw that with Ohio, with Ohio State. Ohio State was able to, to get through, move the ball through the air mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, but this is their alpha dog defensively. It's the opposite of the TCU defense. <laughs> Jalen Carter is their star out there and he's got he is a guy who makes a lot of hay out there and what what I mean by that is he's 63 300 okay 63 300 at the defensive tackle spot he is not he is not going to have 18 tackles in this game if he does things have gone really wrong mm-hmm. Jalen Carter is not going to have five sacks in this game but Jalen Carter in the middle of that defense is disruptive. And he is the guy who blows up blocks. He's a block destroyer. And he blows up what you do want to do in the running game. It is going to be up to the interior of this TCU offensive line to deal with Jalen Carter. Because he is a monster out there. Now they've got other guys that are go- that are the the sack merchants, right? They've got Michael Williams, who's been great for them. Uh, Jamon Dumas Johnson has been really good for them, etc. Uh, Nolan Smith, but really where they make their hay is in the middle of that defense because Jalen Carter is a star up front. They're gonna have to make him. They're going to have to neutralize him in the middle of that defense if they want to get that running game going. We don't know the status of Kendra and Miller, but even if it's, if it's Amari DiMarcato, they still feel pretty good about running the ball. What Ohio State did was, because the, the pass rush and the bull rush and, 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 and the, the guys that they've got are so dangerous, the front for Georgia is so dangerous, they really moved the pocket for, uh, for C.J. Stroud. They let C.J. Stroud get out, move the pocket, and, and run the ball a little bit. Not necessarily to tuck it and run, but just to move the pocket. Max Duggan can do that, and I think they're going to have to do that against this ferocious front seven led by Jalen Carter at the, big, at the big defensive tackle spot. And finally, let's give a little love. Give a little love Offensive to linemen line. deserve more love. Let's talk a little bit about the offensive line. Let's talk about the star of this offensive line, which is Warren McClendon. Warren McClendon... Uh, for for Georgia is the very clear star of this offensive line. He's the right tackle for Georgia, and he has been he has been fantastic for them. Absolutely fantastic. A team captain, uh, all SEC. Um, he is the alpha dog on that offensive line. But in many ways, he's the leader of that offensive line. And really, what he is is he is reflective of everything that Georgia wants to do. Mm-hmm. Georgia is going to run a fair amount of counter where they're going to pull guys like Warren McClendon. They're going to run a fair a fair amount of, of just quick stunts with their offensive line and especially whenever if they're able to have uh, if they're able to have a, a Washington, uh, the the uh, Darnell Washington, the big tight end out there, then they're going to use him alongside uh, alongside uh, uh, Warren McClendon to, to open up some space for them. This offensive line for George is excellent. Yes. It's excellent, excellent, excellent. And if you are TCU, 
you've got to do what you did against Michigan, which is use your 3-3 defense, fire off a bunch of weird blitzes so they don't know where you're coming from, and disrupt the, the running game. Mm-hmm. The running game for Georgia is probably, it's, it's strange to say, it's probably not... Uh, it's probably not as good as Michigan's. Um, at least it's not as star-studded. But Kenny McIntosh and Dewan Edwards, they can go. And by the way, Stetson Bennett can run the ball a bit as well. I was well. just fixing to say, that's where I see the biggest issues coming because Stetson Bennett will blast you He'll on the outside, but he was not scared to punch that thing up the middle. He'll tuck it and run. I think that the Georgia offensive line is better than the, than the, uh, the Michigan de- offensive line. And I also think that they are going to have a better idea of the scheme. They faced, they have faced a 3-3 before. They fa- faced Mi- Mississippi State. And Kirby Smart mentioned that in his press conference yesterday. They have faced a 3-3, to f- 3-3 before. How they handle it and how they put guys like Warren Mac- McClendon rather, in, in tough situations is going to be important. Remember, this is a TCU team that had 13 tackles for loss against Michigan. They will need a, a similar performance from their defense getting into the backfield and being disruptive if they're going to bring home a national championship. So there they are, three players from Georgia that TCU must stop if they're going to win the 2023 national championship. Of course, we'll have complete coverage for you at TexasFootball.com. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.